What's happening, everyone? We are in the throne today, the pseudo throne, the fox throne, the uh, the throne. We're in the throne today. I haven't, I haven't had this background for a while. Shout out to uh, Staked Wealth, who got this from, was this from the Pulse Doge Wind Guys or something? Uh, a long time ago. Got to be going on two years or so, year and a half or so. We're in the throne today. Shout out to uh, where Richard used to stream quite often. Will he go back there? Will he do it again? We do not know. We cannot know. Just like the uh, Dr. Pepper South Park episode. Is is Dr. Pepper a cola or a root beer? We cannot know. No one can know. We just have to continue that way. Just like pumps in this ecosystem, right? We'll get into it. We'll get into it. Um, welcome, everyone, to the... Ooh, let me get my mic out of the way. Got a new, new mic set up, and I'm trying to... I swing it back and forth at the mic arm, but sometimes I got to not get it in the green screen area. So close enough where you can hear me as good as possible, but not too close where it actually affects anything. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, let me say out of the chat. We'll get into it. We got a fun show, fun, exciting show. This is uh first stream of the day uh, on my channel. And then I'll be on Corey's channel to, I guess, do another um, Hex and Hex Classic stream. <laughs> Yesterday was supposed to be the last one. I guess, okay, it's the last one in the series of ones I did. We'll call it that. It's, it's still, uh, it still works, right? It still works. What's up, bobsled? It's like, it's like bobsled, but with a space, bobsled. How's it going? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Welcome to the show. DJ Bomber, what's happening, man? Hextra Shares is here. Mark Danes in the house. Box Modder, how's it going, man? Good to see you all. Tex Hex, thank you. Thank you for your uh, dedication to Acknowledging my dedication as well. I appreciate it. I get get a lot of nice comments from you, and it's always nice to see. Appreciate that, man. Mrs. Background. I know, right? I haven't. I don't use it very often. And like somebody before, people got mad. They're like, "Oh, you shouldn't use that background or something." It's like, it's fun, right? Like, it's fun. It's nostalgic. It brings back memories. I like it. So, um, real picture fake name. Thank you, Max. Uh, you don't have like a bobsled. Uh, you don't have like a bobsled. It makes me think of what is the Cuba Gooding Jr. Uh, Snow Dogs, I want to say. Is that the movie? Is that the movie? Don't ask. Nice. Uh, anyways, everyone, that's enough movie. I, I literally, I like movies. I used to watch movies. Um, used to be somewhat of a cinephile and, uh, you know, person who likes movies a lot. And, uh, I used to watch all kinds of different movies and not really TV shows. I got more into TV shows. Now movies kind of suck these days, honestly, most of them. So it's like, I want to go to the theater and watch stuff, but there's nothing good to watch usually. Or if there is, it's three hours long and I just don't like to sit still for three hours. So I would prefer to watch it at home. I can watch like, you know, I can, I can break it up like a, like a TV series. I can watch like three parts, one hour each day or something. And that way, uh, you know, I delay the gratification, right? I get, pleasure pleasure for three three nights in a row uh through the movie and uh and don't have to just you know do it all at once and, and get rid of it so appreciate that real DeFi side is really good appreciate that go real we're gonna talk about that a little bit today as well it always has a it always has a place when i'm doing stuff because literally i book market i use it all the time i'll all right i'll bring it up real quick i feel like people get tired of hearing about it i try not to um I try not to uh, talk about it constantly because I feel like I always want to bring like fresh stuff. I don't want to constantly talk about stuff, but um, I mean, I, I use it every day pr pretty much. I don't know. It's hard for me to think of a day I don't use it because if I'm going to go to PulseX, I click PulseX. I click Exchange. I want to go to the Hex app. I click Hex. I want to bridge something. I go to the bridge. You know, those are like the three most popular ones, I would say. And then, of course, when I want to see, when I want to share a link, I usually say, go to Google DeFi, go to learn to earn and, and pick something. But uh, these are all playlists and different websites and stuff that go to different places. You want to see all the stats? We have like a billion different stat sites and resources and spreadsheets and hex white paper, closest thing to it type of stuff. So uh, you click uh, stats and I'll give you all the different deck screener, HSI watch, in-state gas calculator, all that fun stuff. Is hex a scam? You can learn about that. I feel like almost no one has seen this site, by the way. Hex.com, go to slash scam. It will tell you all the imaginary horribles and all the things just to uh, give you some perspective on all this stuff's been answered a billion times. And it's all in one place. It used to be on Telegram. It used to be like, go to what Richard used to say, go to Telegram and, and hit the, um, 
use like this the, was it was it uh explanation scam or or something that used to be the thing now it's like hex.com slash scam it'll tell you um information and then you decide from there so oh speaking of hex.com i'm glad hextra t-shirts brought this up i almost forgot so if one time uh sometimes wonder if ehex will be renamed i don't know like i talked about this yesterday on stream i think hex classic is fine i think it's got good branding it's palatable it's uh for onboarding it's explainable ethereum classic uh hex um analogies you know um and then literally the hex.com has been updated I, I don't know if this was here before but uh that looks pretty sweet i gotta say if i go to hex.com and i see this i'm like whoa they made a documentary this thing sounds legit you know that kind of thing diamond still waiting on the diamond come on richard i want to see the diamond sometime is that going to be the the new sacrifices for the erc 404 hex.com diamond where we can trade it's liquidity pool play liquidity pool play it reminds me of gophers and uh all the fun dip catchers having over there dip catcher and gold key and everyone that'd be funny it feels like fractionalized nft sacrifice all your ink that's what everyone wants right they want to sacrifice all their ink so it can have a use case um anyways what the most interesting change to the website I feel very entertaining today, by the way. I feel very, I, don't know, I took a run. I feel like maybe my dopamine levels are up because I took a run. I recommend running if you can. It's nice. And uh, never hurts to have some coffee over there as well. Where is the, the change I want to talk about? Oh, wow. Did they add the community sites down here too? Nice. Go Pulse, go Hexcal. You never know when Go Roll DeFi may be on there. You never know. I don't know. I think... I would say it's it's more likely before then the devs update, you know, the sites that the reason Go Real DeFi was invented, right? Is you go to GoX.com, decentralized, cool. You click this thing, it's got a hash, and nobody knows what this is. Or or you can download it, which you know most people I wager don't want to do. They just want to click a link and go make their trades or make their stakes or whatever. Again, I love it, nerd stuff, love decentralization. Obvious step back. I talked about it this morning on Twitter. Um of how go real DeFi solves this. But I hope one day this page I've talked about this in videos and all this stuff many times before. It just has one thing and it says click here or enter hex staking portal or something. And it doesn't show any of this information. So it's got like a little dot, 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 dot right there. You click that. It says nerd mode. You go into nerd mode and it shows all this stuff. So it's not confusing to everyone else. Um, so when you're onboarding people, you can send them there or I send people to go real DeFi. I like it. It's a, you know, I think it's a simple, elegant solution to all the onboarding stuff, all the just long, ugly looking links. And again, downloading is like, okay, after you download it, you have to, now they have to like run it and you got to teach them. How, it's like, it just, I just want to click a link that looks, you know, that looks pretty like hex.com, right? Beautiful hex.com. Like, okay. Go learn what IPFS is. So you're not afraid to click on this or click on it. And it's got all this stuff. Anyways. One day, I hope that uh, the devs fix it. The devs do something. <laughs> I mean, they don't need to, right? I have, I have Google DeFi. That's what I use all the time to, to get around all the stuff. Because I go to Hex app, I click this, and it gives me a nice, pretty hex.pulsechainapp.com. And it's literally just a window into the IPFS gateway. Nothing more. You can learn about all the security, all the stuff. How does it work? You can go all that stuff, click on the bottom, bottom of the site. It'll... Uh, show you every let's see everything you need to know click one two three four five give you a deep dive fs says how will people have confidence to stake after this deep um <clears throat> that's a good question i don't know i don't know how i feel about staking i mean i know how i feel but i don't know how you know what partially i don't know how i feel on, on for hex classic staking i don't know i just i feel like it's just been it's been eight days and these things need more time for, for, for me to settle on a conclusion for staking there. I think currently, and maybe this will change, but I think currently for hex staking, I'm just going to do, um, I think pools make the most sense, honestly, for, for now. If it's like a, if it's under, I don't know, I guess one way to think of it is if it's under five years, for example, like when do I think gas fees are not going to be a problem? Like completely solved, that sort of thing. If I think that's three years, two years from now, 
maybe I just do pulled staking for those. And then everything else that's, you know, five, 10, 15 years, I don't care. Like, uh, and maybe I make them HSI so they can keep being upgraded or traded in or otherwise. I mean, we don't know all the products going to be built on Hex. Only, you know, there's, there's been a few already and those are getting upgrades. Hedron V2 is coming too. So why wouldn't we keep getting upgrades? Why wouldn't there be more useful stuff to do with Hex on Ethereum or Pulse Chain? Why wouldn't that happen? I'm not betting that it won't, that, that that won't be the case. So why wouldn't I keep using that? But the one, the chain that's the most usable, obviously, is Pulse Chain because of the gas fees and stuff like that. Uh, and again, good problem to have. Maybe we'll, maybe they won't be so affordable one day. And it'll be a good problem to have for everyone getting early and everyone else. Maybe there is a protocol change. Maybe there is uh, a change to some of the uh, fees for different stuff. I mean, all this, all this, every time somebody makes a statement, that is very absolute about I'm not doing this thing because these problems will still exist in the future. I don't know if it's just me, you know, working in tech for a long time and seeing technology progress throughout the years and knowing that all the stuff that we thought was impossible before is commonplace today. Like ChatGPT was never even like never even thought of that. Right. And now it's here. And how many things does that change? So why wouldn't Hex keep being built on? on either chain functionality stuff. I, I, get, I don't know. I just think about it in a different way, I guess. So I think for me, as of now, on Ethereum, pulled staking is what I would be most interested in. But on Pulse Chain, I'm, I, I'm, am I betting on Pulse Chain's going away? No. So why wouldn't I just keep using Hex the same on Pulse Chain? Does it feel like there's a lot more uncertainty right now? Well, sure, because everything just blew up the last week or so. I mean, like figuratively speaking, right? Everything still works. It's just like, there's just so much uncertainty, so much drama and all this stuff. But I'm, I'm betting, I'm also betting that will go away too. And I'm betting that won't last forever. And people will calm down, get more confidence in it, really, you know, figure out what benefits them the most. I'll talk about that more in, in Corey's. I started talking about Hex Class again, didn't I? It's so easy to get into this because I feel like I've, I have all these talking points. I have the, all this data. I can see both sides. I can see both perspectives. And I just pick one, which one I think benefits me and the ecosystem the most. So I already know how to talk about all this stuff. And I'll, again, come to Corey's stream in a couple hours and and uh, I'll sure I'll discuss it more. But I, I think, um, yeah, I think pulled staking for me is the way to go on Hex Classic and everything else as, you know, Everything else as it was for the most part. I'm sure I think everyone's get, got a bad taste in their mouth for staking right now. Maybe that's what it is. That's why I don't want to comment too much on it because I don't want to be like, you know, I think the bad taste in the mouth is temporary. So I don't think it's, there's no, nothing useful I can say on it right now. I think everything just needs to calm down. Everyone just calm down, calm down and carry on. I have not covered anything I want to cover yet. So it's going to be a short stream. So you guys are getting extra content, I guess. Hopefully I'm going to make it better quality though. Let's get into it. Where is the thing I want to cover on this? Was it, uh, cause I saw the tweet. It was from coffee. Let's see. Let me just go to crypto coffee. Cause Richard tweeted about there being, look at that coffee likes go real DeFi. Boom. His pin tweet has go real DeFi right there. I love it. And that was from December. So this has been months. People have been using it for months. It's been working well. Um, let's see. Yeah, this one. So updates to pulse.com. Well, um, so what was different here? I didn't catch what was different here. What was changed? I guess it's just, just the, because uh, we've been, it's, it said mine hex for a while. I didn't, I didn't get that immediately, but this is, this definitely was changed. The market has decided <laughs> the meme that will, that is very memeable right now. The market has decided uh, the funniest one was uh, the catcher was saying the market has decided gophers is the real pulse chain. <laughs> and I have to, I have to laugh. It's just, it cracks me up. Like I know there's all the drama and all the stuff going on and all this fighting, but like some of the things that like I have to take in, in the good spirit, some of the things, that was pretty funny, I gotta say. Um, so, anyways, uh, hex on pulse chain is official hex migration from Ethereum to pulse chain has saved millions of gas fees. Wow, 
Wow, wow, wow. Migration. Remember when, when there wasn't a migration? Um, which I'm still going to make sense. Again, I, I was the one who asked Richard at the conference like two years ago or so, um, two or three years ago, is this migration? And he said no. And I think at the time, that's true. I think at the time, it wasn't a migration when Pulse Chain, before Pulse Chain launched or after it launched. And I think he wanted to see what the market is. I think he had an, an idea. He probably knew that it was probably going to be you know, economic energy and, and all the benefits and stuff was going to go to Pulse Chain Hex. But he didn't call it at the time. And now he's calling it now. And as, you know, as a founder, he's calling it now. So, yeah, it. I mean, migration, there's the word. And again, Hex on Pulse, I think Hex on Ethereum is going to, I don't, I don't see any, I think it'll still have the, you know, the deeper get discount and all this stuff. Again, not financial advice. Don't go buy any of this stuff. Um, don't make any decisions based on anything I say, but I think personally, I think, you know, it'll be, it'll be around, it'll be in stake pools and all that stuff. And what happens when the gas fees become cheaper? I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what's going to happen with Ethereum because Ethereum, I mean, I, I'm, I'm along on the vision of Ethereum over time. Like it's, I, mean, I hear people calling for like 20 K Ethereum this cycle. And stuff like it's just it's crazy like a lot of people obviously they know the power of ethereum and the mat network effect and all the products and all the stuff too and pulse chain again we we have the most rocket fuel potential i've ever seen in my life ever seen in my life this is literally the meme of early ethereum this isn't even this isn't even early ethereum like i don't know what it is it's like early pulse chain i'm gonna call it that like we have we have transcended ethereum as far as starting a new network with a, you know, whatever, how many products, 50, 100, 200 plus platforms and products and all this stuff. And all the different stuff I've told you a million times, like we have, we're, we're an early pulse chain. Like we have transcended Ethereum on that way. Now, can we keep it together and keep going? I mean, that's what, that's what we're supposed to be doing, right? We're supposed to be like, Hey, we have all this potential, all this amazing stuff's happening. Let's keep going. Let's, let's keep, keep being awesome. And let's keep getting people in. So we're not just trading amongst ourselves. Let's get them in. Hopefully they can get mad gains. We can get mad gains. Mad gains for everyone, right? It sounds amazing to me. Um, everyone who, you know, makes the right calls and judgments and positions and stuff. Not, of course, not everyone, but uh, everyone who who is given a fair chance to get in and, and get positioned and, and take liquidity as they like and all that stuff. Uh, placing their bets and all that. So a fair ecosystem is what I like. A place where... I can use information as an edge instead of just being tricked and red pulled and oh my god, oh this thing's happening, I like all this stuff now. So it's uh it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So I went off on that one. Um somehow I'm still talking about EX. Well, let's go to Richard's tweets. Everyone loves Richard's tweets. Everyone loves them even more these days. Let's talk about them for a minute. What's up, Hex Edits? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. So a couple of interesting things. So of course the hex.com changes and then um, improvements. So he says improve, be more responsive. So I thought this was just a website change um, or, okay, they release adapt. dApp. You know, I guess you do got upgrade the new, the new version to get all the stuff since it's not just a hosted website, it's decentralized thing. So got to do a new app and all that stuff. So he says it's been improved. I'm like, okay, so it's already live. And I was checking the versions and stuff. I say, okay, the versions haven't been updated. And then he said, sorry, I forgot to include in the 1.06 release, which isn't released just yet soon. So if you go to, again, you can check all the stuff on GoRoll DeFi, click verify hash right here at the top. And that'll verify all the safety and if you're using the right app and, and everything pointing to the right place. And I did talks and streams and stuff on that. Search RHMAX, GoRoll DeFi to see all the explainers or go to the bottom of the page like I mentioned earlier. Click these how it works links one two three four five. So if you see here, yeah, still zero one five. So when it's upgraded, there's a script on the back end for the site that will that automatically checks the official site to see if there's any upgrades and stuff. And it'll so when when it's upgraded, it'll automatically I think it checks every minute or so for updates. It'll automatically update update the site. It'll be pointing to the latest version, all the hashes. You know, just check out everything goes well. And then, uh, yeah, you don't have to do anything. If you download the apps, you got to update them yourself. And if you bookmark the, the, the links, if they change, well, there'll be new links because they're new apps. 
you go real DeFi, you don't do any of that stuff. It's automatically updated. You just click the link and you can verify the security yourself doing all this stuff. So um, 106 coming out soon. And it sounds like just uh, more responsiveness updates. I think we we're all looking for the uh, single side of staking, DAOs, pools, you know, other stuff like all that, all that stuff too. All the limit orders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who knows? Maybe 107. Maybe it makes it in this release. Maybe it's just, uh, you know, giving a hint, uh, low expectations type of thing. I'm sorry. Did I say low expectations? I meant no expectations. You would not expect limit orders. Um, but you never know. 107, 108. This one, who knows? So PulseX, new version coming there. And I see that, I don't know if you all noticed, but every time there is green, whether we went down a bunch and went back up briefly or not, every time we do it, he tags Ethereum. He tags Ethereum people and he wants to show them the price go up. And I've noticed this. He does it like every time there's green, he takes this opportunity, right? There's marketing. Like he wants to show people on Ethereum, hey, there's another chain that the tokens are going up and all this stuff. So he does like little things like that you, you can see over time. And then when he posts these charts, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Like he always leaves all this room and he doesn't draw any lines. He doesn't like, Oh, this is what I can do and all this stuff. I don't know. I love the imagination. I love the very silence, you know, uh, not a signal, but like, to me, that looks like, Hmm, like maybe one day we'll be charting some stuff up here. Uh, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Right. But the biggest thing I think was interesting. So Hexologist actually tipped me off to this. I saw this tweet. Came across this. I really didn't pay much attention to it at first. I was like, oh, trade. You know, he just posted the, you know, one of the one of the classic videos of him talking about trading and all this stuff. And I kind of like, yeah, you know, he's been tweeting a lot of different stuff. Which one should I pay attention to? And then uh, Hexo uh, retweeted it, and he said, I wonder why he mentioned this. And I was like. That is a good question. Why would he mention that? And to me, I think he's giving, to me, it was kind of like a nudge of, hey, if you're trying to trade this thing, you know, traders, uh, you know, trading destroys your health and relationships, all that stuff. You may wreck yourself if you start trying to trade this pick. Oh, yeah, Pulse Chain sucks. It's, let me, you know, th here's what the normal TA says. Let me make decisions based on that. I don't think it's a normal ecosystem. And, uh, and I say that in a good way. Um, and, and of course the other way too. So again, be careful out there if you have leverage, leverage positions, um, or otherwise we have a lot of great products and ecosystem that lets you do advanced things, but you know, you may be surprised to the upside and you may be surprised to the downside. I think that's what he's trying to hint at. And he's like, just relax. Don't need to trade this stuff. Like, you know, it's bull market. Hopefully price go up. I think that's how. I think that's how I'm trading this. And not just that one. So there's two. So there's the video, which if you haven't seen it, I recommend everyone to watch it. Every year, I keep in mind, I try to go through and watch the entire playlist of all his Fix the World and um, forget the other one. Two playlists. Let's get to this YouTube real quick. It's worth going to. Richard Hart, YouTube. Of course, there's SciVive, narrated by, uh, by SJ as well, which is amazing. So if you want to listen to SciVive, it's on YouTube. But if you go to his playlists, yeah, success and fix the world. Like these two, I'll drop them in the chat. They, if you've never seen them, I try to listen to them every year because I think they're just super good. And they have little to do with crypto. They're like, most of them have little to do with crypto. They're more about like how to give a good apology, how to, you know, stop trading and how to fix the world, how, you know, you know, a lot of this stuff is like you know seven, seven, eight years old, but a lot of it still uh, holds up today, and it's really, really good. And uh, yeah, I really like it. So let's go back here. So he posted two. So he did traders often end up being traders. Some other with BS get you long. So they sell. So he's talking about trading a lot. So maybe he thinks that people are uh, are trying to trade and 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 win that way in this ecosystem. Which again, if we go back to foundational principles. Additional principles. Again, you can do whatever you want with your coins, but you know, Hex was made to delay gratification, earn interest over time, get you away from the computer. And uh, Pulse Chain 
it meant to save you money on gas fees and provide an ecosystem that can't be gate kept with, uh, you know, with hex and pulse X and everything else included. So a lot of these, again, I'm Arish Maxi for his ideals. And, um, I think he has the best ones overall. It's not perfect. I've constructively criticized him, uh, many occasions, which I think anyone should do that. Anyone should be, I think we need more of that in the community, uh, of being like, Hey, you know, if you don't agree with this, come up with why say it, maybe people agree with you, maybe they don't, but at the end of the day, it's the founder. So founders, founders have calls that founders do. So yeah, speaking of a lot, let's say she appears. Yeah. Top hat RH classic, classic RH. He's uh, yeah, that was a, uh, let's see where's the top hat. Yeah, there you go. Pretty cool. Pretty cool guy. That guy right there. So, oh, that was interesting. So is that a signal? Is that a signal for the next pump? Like I've, I've covered these like tweets cause he goes on these tweets and then in 2020, it's like, oh wow, that was, that was so obvious. Like he was literally hinting this thing. And so he did a couple of the trading things and I'm like, Hmm, is that a signal to be like, Hey guys, stop effing up. You don't need to do all this stuff. If can you just be patient? Can you just hang out? Like, Maybe, uh, maybe there'll be some more pumps. You never know. All right. I really do think that, and I, again, I could be wrong. This is total speculation. Like, do not take any of this stuff. This is just my personal opinion, but I really do think these are just test pumps to see how the market responds to refine a bigger, you know, bigger within a, a part of a bigger strategy, a glory pump, if you will. Um, again, I will never give you financial advice whatsoever, but it looks that way to me. If I were to guess, if, I, if I'm reading this, this book that describes, uh, you know, the story of this ecosystem after it's all, you know, we're five years from now, you know, books are written, more documentaries. I really do think that we'll have things like that as well. Uh, if indeed we did, if indeed we do get to glory and all the stuff I know we're capable of doing, I think looking back, it'll, it'll, it'll be obvious. And I said yesterday, like, is this a test? God, it sucks if it's a test. <laughs> But uh, I think it's supposed to be that way. I don't think there's any better way to do it if it were if we were in such a thing. Um, there's no better way to reveal character. There's no better way to reveal, um, you know, the, the, I don't know. I don't think everyone needs to be strong in every single way. But I think there is something to be said for people who uh, are rewarded for making the right decisions and not just collapsing into degeneracy. I think there's something to be said to that. Now, I was trying to reward people. I would, I would lean that way as well. So, whether or not uh, the pumps continue, or they happen forever, all the amazing theories we can come up with—the perpetual black pressure and the vampiring Ethereum—to create this amazing positive, you know, feedback loop. Is it a positive feedback loop, or is it just, you know, uh, helping buy buy all the stuff, you know, all of those things, you know, or you're into the um, the bootstrap theory of like, okay, we need green candles to attract more people to chicken and egg. So we need to like pumps of bootstraps, uh, a bootstrap pump to like get people more come in, more people come in, invest. They tell more people network effect scale, the buys and sales and trades and volumes just start occurring. Uh, I don't want to say naturally again. I like this like natural market manipulation type of stuff. I really like dip catchers uh, thoughts on this, where he was, he was talking about like, you know, market manipulation doesn't exist you know, in, in the sense of the way I interpret it is there's wells with money who use it. So, and it, and it's way different than in crypto than it is in the stock market and all that stuff too, because everything's on chain. So it's, it's democratized. Uh, you can see, you can see the wells making these moves. You can get, you know, you can see all this stuff happening. You don't have to be in some special club, um, to get access to a lot of information. Again, if you have the skills or the resources or otherwise. So, um, again, I think it's just, um, I think he's just seeing how the market responds. He entity, whoever's doing all this stuff. I think the Godwell has him came into play as far as, uh, pumping any of the bags yet. I don't say this to, re as a, as if I want to rely on whales and the ecosystem to pump the bags. I think they're complementary. I think the code, the ideals, the principles that I, I want to affix and stay true and, and promote. Uh, and the community who believes in it uh, and sticks with it. I think those are the things that can, that make this place, you know, great and 
and scale and, and bring more people in people doing pulse chain tour or people doing meetups and um you know outbound messaging and all the different stuff people are doing at their content creation obviously streaming all this stuff i think those are the primary factors for growing the place that's what they were before right like, like for the most part that's what they were before i don't know why they can't be that now and as have complementary pieces come in to pump some bags i think it can, i think both can work it's just things have went up on our deck so everyone just has all this uncertainty around So a couple more things I'm going to wrap up here in a moment, but let's see. Yeah, I think this is important too. I did this poll. So uh, as usual chat, give me an answer so I can, uh, I can pick one of these. I don't want to taint it myself. So pretend for a moment that so many months in the future and the bull, crypto bull run is over. What is more likely story that we tell for RH ecosystem? Either, you know, is it dead or alive? Like, can you imagine, if you literally imagine, I was thinking about this, I was like, can you imagine the rest of crypto finishes the pump, everything's great, everyone in crypto is like, oh my gosh, look at the bull market was so great. We had so much fun, we made so much money. And then pulse change just like sideways, pretty much. It's just everyone's just still fighting everything and just upset and mad. And Richard's just like, he just keeps berating the community. Like, can you imagine that? Like, like half of everyone's left for other stuff. No, I can't imagine that. That sounds very strange. That sounds like bizarro world. Um, or this place moons. You got a moon? We got one moon in the chat. Shout out to Wallace. She, she gives me a moon in the chat. Wow, this has only been around for a few hours and already 500 votes. And it seems like most people believe in moon. The moon is strong. So that's Benny. I believe Gloria Lates. I believe that as well, Benny. I personally believe that as well. Everyone make up their own mind, but I am placing my bets accordingly. Lots of people, lots of people. They think the moon is the more likely scenario. Nobody knows. And I've said before, in a sea of uncertainty, I can only place my bets. So, moon, moon seems like the more likely, uh, more likely narrative, more likely thing to happen to me. And uh, yeah, I think the community is stronger than we think. And, and you got, oh yeah, most people just click in that because they want that to happen. What if they actually believe it? Like how? What? At a certain point, like what is the difference? Like. I don't know. I don't know how beneficial it is between the distance between hope and cope. Like how beneficial is it? If nobody knows, if nobody can prove the thing is going to go down and not recover. And also if nobody can prove that, what is the difference between hope and cope? If everything historically has shown that we're in good shape, what is the difference? What, like what is the benefit? And even, where it's a benefit in, in in trying to paint a different picture. It's and this is not some. Yeah, again, I'm trying to use first principles thinking here. I'm trying to be objective. I'm trying to look at all the facts, look at everything. Of course, I want this thing to moon, but what what is the other picture? What is the other side that actually has legs? We could sit here and paint it all day. I mean, I sort of paint it this way. But I don't know. Maybe we need to like we we need a focus group. Can we hire a focus group? It's the bull market. We can we can spend money now, right? Let's hire a focus group. Show them an objective. Show I don't know. Show them the documentary. Not that that's a you know, I don't know. I was gonna say not that it's objective. It's kind of objective. It ends a little negatively. I mean, I love the I love it. It's awesome. Um, but I'm not sure. Maybe maybe show them the documentary and then show them like some more positive stuff to balance it out. <laughs> of what we've seen the last couple of years and then let them decide and, and see those numbers. Maybe that would be pretty interesting to see. Let's get a focus group. Organize, get a focus group. All right. This one is fun. <clears throat> what do you think glory looks like? So again, if you're in the camp of, you know, 
all those coins went into Ethereum and Ethereum will go up. Pretty interesting. Somebody's talking about it, Richard. So Ethereum, or you know, he's talking about the Sack Daddy, the OA, whoever, um, at 11K rotated the 1.8 billion. That would be how much, I guess 11K, how much it'd be worth at the time, into Pulse Chain. It's coming up with 121X for every coin. So, you know, forget all this. I mean, this is, you can call it moon math. You can call it whatever. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's that crazy, honestly, but what does glory look like? Wow. Two cent pulse, X, pulse, two cent pulse, one cent pulse X. Pulse X to a penny just sounds like, you know, this impossible thing, but I don't know how impossible is it really? PX at 240 and then EX. So if, the, if you assume the ratio, at uh, you know 0.2, ehex to almost fifty cents, ink at a thousand bucks. Is that what glory looks like? Like, if we were to quantify it, is it is it this? Is it half of this? Is it more? I don't know. Those numbers look pretty good to me. Look pretty good to me. So. I think it's interesting. Again, I don't put a lot of weight into it. It's just for, it's just really for fun. But if I were to really think about what glory looks like for the ecosystem, I mean, those numbers, I don't know who's calling it a failure if, if that happens. And if you don't believe it can happen, that's, that's okay. But like, I'm in it for glory. These numbers look pretty glorious. So I hope they happen. One more, and we will wrap up. Got a lot of stuff to talk about, like I said today. Shout out to Just Ask Jesse. He's got a lot of a lot of good commentary and makes a lot of good content on the show when we talk get into the the deep stuff of uh, of you know of, of of crypto and stable coins and all that stuff too. So hey Ethereum, I realized asking you to look at Pulse Chain because it's faster and cheaper isn't going to do jack shit. I love the opening statement. It's like hmm. I mean, there, there's a point to be had there uh, as far as marketing stuff goes. Uh, you know, I'm not 100% on that, but I think uh, I think there are ways to where it is compelling. But uh, using it as the as the way, yeah, it's it's is uh, as again dip catcher lowest common denominator. Uh, it's we we have more we have more. So and he, he does bring out some more points. You know, dozens of EVMs fit the description. Here's a few things that Pulse Chain has that others don't. Create aggregators. Trustless OTCs, leveraged lending platforms, two native trustless stable coins backed by millions of dollars worth of respective collateral. Boom. Another stable backing by 10 plus institutions. DeFi yield automation tools. Win Tetra Dev, Win Tetra, one day. Um, I certainly hope so. Come on. Um, shout, out to, shout out to Tetra. Omnis is awesome, by the way. So if you guys aren't using Omnis for limit orders, you should type in RH Max limit orders pulse chain and you'll find. A, uh, a demonstration of that. Several DEXs, NFT platforms, gambling, mixing, polling, oracles, memes, list goes on and on. On-chain, not bridge in tokens. Uh, not only bridge in tokens with all this stuff. Pulse chain literally has more building any other chain done in the same period. Most builders are easily reachable to offer support and assistance. The community itself is massive. Many diverse influential educators there's unlimited avenues for growing your user base on Pulse Chain. There really is, especially with new people coming in, building projects. Um, yeah, I mean, there's if you make quality stuff, there's there's people here who who uh, who may like it and support it, and uh, easy to get behind too. If you build something that's obviously valuable, and I mean, for me, like I said, I concentrate on things that I think positive feedback loops, obvious for Pulse Chain, and uh, I found that in several different ways. But uh, there's a lot of people who you build value. Uh, they, uh, there's a lot of people who are very interested in that kind of thing. So I think that was great. That was a great rundown. And you, we could drill into each one of these and then go through the different stuff and platforms and, and all that stuff too. But I think that was, it's worth sharing stuff like this um, because when people are like, oh, why should I get a pulse chain? And if they aren't, you know, if they aren't like, oh, like, because you can click one button, connect to it in Ethereum wallets work and all this stuff. You may have an airdrop. If there's all these other things that will sell them, and if they are like actually like builders or otherwise too, and actually care about some of these foundational stuff, 
Jesse's put out a lot of great points. They're all true. It's true stuff. Not just, it's not hopium. It's not making it up. It's not these cherry picked, you know, metrics or, or all that stuff. A lot of good stuff. So really appreciate posts like that to clarify and give people information. And uh, that's what I like to see. So uh, I think that's all I got. I think that's all I got. Again, come on, come on Corey's show. Let's see. If you want to hear me talk more about Hex and Hex Classic, EHEX, PX, whatever you like to call it. Uh, YouTube, Corey, Costa, Crypto, Coins, CCCC. And the road ahead with Hex. Yeah, come check this out. In a couple hours, I'll be on there if you have more questions. And otherwise, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get too much into the chat right now. But uh, Armando says, I just ran to a fellow Pulse chain at a gas station five minutes ago wearing a PLS shirt. Needs some year two at odds. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see people again, meetups or just seeing people, um, you know, hanging out. Just you walk around Vegas. I think I was, I think I was, uh, I, was I was walking around Vegas and I just see people. I think I saw someone in cars or people honking at me. I was wearing like hex gear and otherwise. Um, I don't even think it was around the time of the conference or was it? I don't remember. But there's people, people out there. There's a lot of, a lot of hex skins, a lot of pulse skins, a lot of people who believe. And uh, they want financial freedom and they're trying to, they're trying to get it. And they're trying to get good information to uh, make their dreams come true. And that's all, that's what we want at the end of the day. And we want to, you know, I want to support places that uh, share that vision. And uh, yeah, got some talents. We want you, you want, got positivity. You got a, you got a contribution. You want, we want to make, you want to make on a, in a positive way. Pulse chain, a lot of, a lot of opportunity here. So that's all I got for you. See you in a couple hours on Corey's channel. Side vibe and five, 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 five. We are out.